Hey guys, just a quick message about this video. I did do some of this video with um, actually talking through it. It made the video extremely long, so I apologize that it is so long, but I wanted to go over each of the steps individually for the pencil cup. I have some that are uh, not talked through. I just voice over um, pieces of it. So. I hope that the addition of doing the vinyl pieces is helpful to you, and if you have any questions or anything about it, just drop a comment and let me know. The colors I used were Bolt Glitter's Stroke of Midnight, Painted Valley Designs Sand, Backfist Customs Banana, Bolt Glitter's Silver Sparkle, and Glitzy City Pinky Promise. This is going to be my first pencil cup. And so I wanted to share with you guys what I'm doing in order to do this. And the first thing that I did was I painted my cup just a generic white color because I want the colors that I'm putting on it to really shine through. And I don't want the stainless steel color to take away from the true color. So the pencil will be true to color. And the f person that I'm doing this for, they wanted the eraser to be on the bottom and the pencil lead to be on the top. So the first thing I did was I took my elastic, and you find this at um, a fabric store or in the fabric section at, not, at another store, like a Hobby Lobby, I think is where I got it. And I just hot glued it together to where it can be used to tape off my cups. And so I'm going to tape this part here, and that's how I'm gonna start. I'm going to use a painter's tape for this, um, which I hope works as good as my other, but since I've already painted this, I don't want to risk taking off the paint. And so I'm just going to tape it just outside that line. This is literally just a painter's tape that I had lying around my house. So it's nothing special. And you just want to make sure that you're getting it up close to where that line is. And then it connects with your other line as well. And I always tend to just kind of pull it down a little bit once I reach the other side, which it's right there. So I'm just going to pull it down and then I'm going to pull my tape off. And just press it down and then I can slide this elastic off and like I said it's just a piece of elastic and I've just glued it with E6000 and it's just a piece of elastic so I'm gonna go ahead and press all of this down Get into the black color first. The top of my pencil and that does come up a little bit there, and I don't want that to do that. So I'm gonna.
pull that down just a little bit. Because I don't want it to seem like it's kind of humped up there. Um, I want it to be smooth all the way around. For this cup, I'm going to be using my Mod Podge um, just because I'm doing small portions at a time. And uh, as most of you guys are aware, I use the Hard Coat Mod Podge. If I had a lot of time to do this, I probably could do this with a um, epoxy method and you would just have to go slow and take each individual section. And a lot of times I do this. I just use my little measuring cups for my Mod Podge. That way I just have a little bit of it. And I use the big bristle brushes. I make sure there's no glitter in them because I tend to use them as well to brush off everything. This one, I don't have a very good um, handle in it. It just have a small one. And this cup is a 24 ounce hog. It's tapered, and so it's a little bit bigger than what I'm used to working with. And I'm just going to apply my Mod Podge evenly as possible all the way around the cup. I do tend to pull down so that I'm getting all of that area. With Mod Podge you gotta work a little bit faster so it does not dry out. Try to keep that in mind as well. And I always kind of go back over the previous section that I've Mod Podged just to make sure. That it's wet. and to make sure that the Mod Podge is even and not streaky. And I'm using Bolt Glitters, Stroke of Midnight. Black is my color. gonna put two coats of all of my glitters on here. So that is step one. And I will be back for the next step. off all of the loose glitter so it's getting its second coat of Mod Podge and glitter now and I just go back over 
all of this that I've already done. string when you do this you can tell where oops, I keep hitting you can tell where the line is on your tape as well and so I'm just making sure I'm going at least up over that line. Now I have not pulled my tape yet, as you can see. The time between my first coat of Mod Podge and Glitter and this coat was probably about 45 minutes, I'm guessing. I usually let it dry for at least a half hour. And then you just wanna make sure that you're getting that Mod Podge into the glitter, so. When you're pressing or when you're coating with Mod Podge, you want to press into the glitter. When you're coating with epoxy, you don't want to press your glitter. And the reason is because with epoxy, you can generate bubbles. All right, so I have all of them Mod Podged. And I just drop my brushes into water as soon as I'm done with them. And that keeps them from getting all gross. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and apply this second coat. Make sure I'm hitting all of the wet Mod Podge. And then the next step is to remove your tape. And so when I remove my tape, I just pull back away from my line. And there is some wet Mod Podge on there, so you want to try to just make sure you're not disrupting any of that. But I'm pulling back to keep that line. Now this Mod Podge um, will dry in about, again, 30 to 45 minutes. So I'll let that completely dry. And then I'll go back and brush this off. This is obviously not sticking because there was no Mod Podge there. So I will just brush that off when it's completely dry. chevron pattern and I have measured out the length of my cup is around and I'm making that to where it will fit when I put it around my cup. For this part I have the vinyl cut and I to de-stick it I stuck it to my pants just so that it wasn't as tacky because it is 651.
going to put down a piece of paper and make sure I don't get anything on this. And then I'm going to start in the middle. Which is about here. I want it to be about this far down my cup. last part is going to be just a little bit tricky. I did warp this to help it try to line up a little bit better, but it is still just a hair off even though I did warp it. with that last one so I'll probably just end up pulling it off of this side and pulling it down some people just use tape um, you can obviously use whatever works for you thing for me is I just don't want it to look too wonky where it joins. And a pencil's not perfect either, so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. I will go ahead and just put a little bit of tape over that. just so my Mod Podge doesn't get on it. And this is just painter's tape. All right, so there's that. So now I'm ready to do the wood color for the top. And again, I'm going to use Mod Podge, and the color I'm going to use is Sand, it's Painted Belly Designs Glitter. And I'm going to get a new brush, and this time I'm going to go with just a little bit of a smaller one, mainly for the fact that I'll have better control with those lines, better with using that. And I did seal this, and I will have a video before this showing me sealing it, and the reason I did that is just so the black doesn't flake off, because I don't want that black to flake off and get into any of my other colors. using hard coat Mod Podge. And I use my little containers here. And 
I'm just gonna go up with my brush like that and just touch that black and that's another reason why I wanted to spray seal that as well because I didn't want it to bring black back down trying to move fairly quickly because again this is Mod Podge so it does dry fairly quickly and you do want to make sure you're going all the way up to your black try not to go over I'm sure I'll make a few mistakes but Just want to make sure that that is still wet before you apply your glitter or else your glitter will not stick there so I'm just going back and making sure And I'm going to let this dry and then apply a second coat. And there's the first coat. Okay, so I have let this dry and I haven't done this in my video for a while so I thought I would just show you what I do. I just dry brush to get any excess off and like that you'll notice areas where um, the Mod Podge had kind of dried before I got to it. okay because I will fix it with this next coat. And these are just brushes that you can get anywhere. I think I got mine at Michael's. And once you've done the first coat, your Mod Podge does stick better to your glitter. So it makes it a little bit easier for that next coat because it kind of soaks into it. And I'm just being very careful as I go. 
making sure I go up next to the black. I will note if you're using the same Mod Podge as you work, you can stick it in a bag and keep it moist so it doesn't dry out on you. But if you're using it for the different colors, you um, want to make sure you're not dipping your brush back into it, which is what I'm doing here. Um, and so I'm actually contaminating my Mod Podge. Because it will have my other color in it, so when I get my next color to do, I won't use the same little cup of Mod Podge, and that's why one of the reasons why I just use the little thing. I don't put a whole lot in there and then I don't waste too much either. And again I'm just pressing into the glitter to make sure that I'm coating it well. As you saw the last time there was a couple spots that did not get enough Mod Podge so that they weren't dry before I got to it. So that is kind of one of the benefits of doing the second coat, is that it does soak it in a little bit. And the epoxy method would work on this, you would just have to wait a lot longer. Meet it all the way around. Make sure this is wet. Okay, I'm gonna stick that in my water and I'll dump this on. I usually go around a couple times just to make sure when I'm adding this that all of that Mod Podge is getting into the glitter and soaking it up. If I need to go back and touch up a few areas, I can do that always. But I just make sure to dump.
and I do pull my tape right away after I've done my glittering because I want to get those fresh lines and I pull away Pulling down, I don't know if you can see. So, there you have it. All of the wood part is done. The next part will be the yellow, the silver, and then the base. So, we have a good start on the pencil. For this section, I use the banana color from Back Fist Customs, and I'm going to go ahead and take my same brush, the larger one, and apply Hard Coat Mod Podge in all of those little crevices. This is a little bit tricky because the Mod Podge does dry so quick that you want to make sure that you get it all in all of those crevices as well as get it all around the cup. So I try to go as quickly as possible, but I do want to make sure that I get um, those lines very well so that it's definitive as far as the lines go. And so I just kind of push my Mod Podge up against those lines as I move along them and then um, just make sure that it, I go back over it a second time just to make sure that it's dry or not dry, um, that it's not, it hasn't dried out by the time I get all the way around the cup. I then pour the glitter onto all my Mod Podge and I start at the top where those uh, arrows are pointing the little chevron piece of that to make sure that all those parts that are most easily going to dry out are not going to dry out before I get the glitter on them. I then go back in with my second coat onto my um, already existing banana color glitter and I'm using again Hard Coat Mod Podge and just making sure that I press into the glitter as I move around it and then make sure that I get all of those areas. I did brush this off before I started and one thing, I, I only sealed my black color, I did not seal the sand color before moving to this. I just made sure it was completely dry and then brushed off my sand color once I was completed with it and once I had let it dry. That way going on into the banana color, then I didn't have any uh, pieces of glitter or random colors get into this area or as I brushed. So um, I didn't seal the next color, but you could if you would like.
immediately after I get done applying all my glitter, I kind of tap off the bottom and make sure any loose glitter is tapped off. And then I immediately pull my tape and I pull it down and away from the glitter just to make sure that I keep that nice line that I want. For this part in taping prior to glittering the base of it for the eraser, I cut along my painter's tape to allow it to bend along that line. Um, I tried not cutting it before this and it didn't work. It didn't allow me to bend around the circle of the base. So with cutting it in little slits along that tape, it gave me just enough flexibility in it to uh, be able to fit it around in a circle in the circle because it's it needed to be kind of curved so it did allow me to do that For the pink, I used Glitzy City's Pinky Promise color, which is a very nice color of pink. It has a little bit of gold shift, and I really like it and how it looked on my cup for the eraser. It's real bright, and so that's the color that I used, and after I got my Mod Podge on, I'm just sprinkling it on there and giving it a real good coat. This is the last step for the eraser. I go ahead and Mod Podge all along, um, or actually I'm brushing off. So I'm brushing off and getting all of the loose glitter off. And then I Mod Podge over the glitter that's existing and just make sure it's all completely covered. And then sprinkle all my glitter again, and then immediately remove the tape, again pulling down and away.
This is the final step in the glittering portion of this and this is the silver and I don't need any guidelines because I already have them from the other two colors. So I just take my brush and my Mod Podge and I paint in the middle with my Mod Podge and make sure that it's all completely covered and then just sprinkle on my Silver spark Sparkle by Bolt Glitters and I do two coats. For the pencil cup, I have designed the name inside of Silhouette Studio, and I have the business edition. And so, um, just a quick little video on how I do that. I just selected the text, click in here, and then I type the name. So it looks like this, and then when you highlight it. And from the right hand side there's text options so you can actually change the fonts or do whatever you'd like to do to your actual font and so then I changed this I think I used starfish and I always keep a copy 
so I just copy and paste. I keep a copy of the original off to the side and the reason is because you generally will change so you'll weld your letters together and if you have any issues or you want to go back and revert to the original it's always good to keep your original off to the side that way you can do that without having to recreate everything again so then I change the color just for me it's just for being able to look at it on here um, it doesn't print out this way unless you were to print it on paper but I'm using black vinyl when I print it so that's what I wanted to do and then if you can see those red lines here you're gonna have overlapping cuts and you don't want to do that so with all of your wording you should weld it and you just right click and click weld and that'll kind of separate those letters so now you have actual like individual pieces without having the whole word like it had it over here with this one it was one piece and that's why I keep a separate version of the original and then I just highlight all of those pieces, right click, and I group. And by doing that, it puts all of your wording back together and then you can make it big or little or however size you want it. For the cut that I'm doing, I always measure the size. So like if I'm doing um, if I want my wording to go horizontal, I will measure that distance in the viewable area. And what I mean by viewable area is, so when you're looking at the cup, I want to see it. I don't want to have to rotate to see the actual wording. I want to see the actual name. So I measure this viewable area here and it was about three inches so when I do my sizing I'm sorry for going back and forth but I wanted to show you that when I do my sizing here I want to make sure that I'm doing a size that's going to be viewable and will fit so I did just a little under three inches so now that I have that ready I click send and it's going to bring up your um, cut version of this. Now I don't want to cut that so you can just drag it off and you'll notice that it changes to not being red. The red area is only the portion that will cut. So anything in red and over here it'll show cut. If you don't want to cut that, if you can see when I clicked on it, it says cut. If you don't want to cut it, you could say no cut if you had something else on your design space. But now I'm gonna pull you up here real quick. I already have my vinyl loaded. And I'm just gonna click send. Which is this button right here. So now it's gonna cut. Okay, so it has finished. And with the silhouette, you just click unload. This button says unload. So then I catch it. And then you can see it is cut. This is my cut from what we did. And it did kind of pull out some of those middle pieces, but that's okay. So I'm going to um, pause and come back. Okay. So now, I tend to just put these down underneath just so I don't get any weird glitter and stuff on my cups after they're done. Um, I have sanded this down just because there was a few little weird pieces along it, so it's been sanded. I did use a thick enough coat of glitter that this really was smooth enough. As you can see, it didn't really need to be sanded. But here's my cut and I have taken it off of the mat and then I just cut it and I'm gonna peel it up so that it reveals the lettering 
that we have cut with the Cameo. Well, this one has a delicate cut, so I'm trying to be careful, make sure I keep that down. And I tend to use these little tools just to grab them and push it back down when they do that. This one's being a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna start with this side first. And you don't want to like push down, you don't wanna leave marks. So you have to be pretty gentle when you're trying to pull it off. Those little ends are getting stuck. I don't know if y'all can see that. So I'm just gonna hold it down and then pull it off slowly. There we go. And the thing that when you're doing your decals that you wanna make sure you're getting, which I lost, <laughs> I just noticed that. See how there's a dot for the misses? Mine came off with my vinyl, so don't do that. <laughs> so I'll just place that back down where it was. And so then you're just gonna go through and weed out all of the vinyl that's stuck in between. Like I said, this one has some pretty delicate pieces. Um, as you can see, those little tiny little letter parts of it. I take my time with weeding because I don't want to leave marks on my vinyl. And I don't want to miss and stab it either. just have these last few little pieces which if you weed anything at all you're used to just random letters and little pieces getting stuck to you that you find hours later all right so there is that and now this is completely weeded it's ready to go so I get my transfer tape. Now this final is 651 Oracle. This is transfer right, transfer paper. And I usually just lay it down like this. And then I put the vinyl on top of it and press down. And then I cut it out. a little credit card looking thing this thing which has epoxy and glitter on it of course and I just run this across my letters to make sure that they're stuck to my transfer tape so that when I pull the transfer tape up it's going to stick to my transfer tape so that I can put it on the cut some of the holographic vinyls and the chrome vinyls are a little bit trickier because they don't like to stick to the transfer tape but the Oracle I don't usually have any problems with. And so there it's on 
my transfer tape. So then I just kind of look at it, measure it, stand up and look at it <laughs> to make sure that it's going to be centered. And if you have like a chevron like this, um, I try to make sure it's centered within that as well, just so that it looks decent. Um, and I want it to be up just a little bit. And this is kind of a swirly font, so it's kind of hard to tell. So I always look, I go back and look at my silhouette to see how it looks in there. <laughs> before placing it. press 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 and you're wanting to make sure that it's pressed down really good so that it does not lift when you do your epoxy so I usually go over it a few times take my card and run over it a few times especially those little whimsical pieces that are flippant up there you know make sure those get down really well as well corner of my tape and I go slow and I come and I pull up and make sure that I'm going against it and getting it all so there you have it I did notice which you probably didn't notice but there's that tiny little piece that came out and got shifted over so I'm just gonna use my flat my flat tool, which is this one, and I'm just going to slide it off of there. Again, you don't want to use anything too pointy because you're liable to slip and stab it, and you don't want to do that. So, there you go. watching like and subscribe if you'd like to see more drop me a comment if you have any questions